Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. I'm really excited about this video because I'm finally going to show you guys how to make something with resin, which I've wanted to do for a long time now. So I'm going to show you how to make faux amber. Now, um, some of you might not know this, but resin does have a shelf life. If you've had resin for a year, it's going to be yellow. If you have it longer than a year, it's going to turn brown. And if you're like me and you've had resin for three and a half years, it's going to be a very dark brown color. So here are two bottles of resin that I've had for three and a half years. It's kind of hard to see how dark it is because of my camera angle, but you can see it, it's pretty dark. So these two are three and a half years old and I use this very old resin to make these uh, faux amber cabochons. They're so beautiful. I really love them. And I have two more bottles right here. Um, these two bottles are a year and a half old. It's not actually the resin that turns brown. It is the hardener that discolors. Even though it's turned color, it still works the same exact way. It still cures. So you can use this discolored resin in other projects other than amber. It's just that it won't be crystal clear anymore and you will have to color it with something. So I've used things like eyeshadow, mica powder, nail polish, acrylic paint, alcohol ink to color my resin. And Cast and Craft also sells a color pigment. It's kind of like a dye. It's in a very small bottle. I've never bought it because I've always been a cheapskate and I've done it both other ways that I've told you. But um, I saw that Cast and Craft actually has like a dye that is for doing this amber look if you want this amber color. And I went on to Amazon and it was pretty expensive. But um, it could have just been the seller that it was coming from. But if you guys were to look around online, I'm sure you can find it somewhere else cheaper. So if you do have resin that's not old and you want to make this, you could get that to do it or you could try to make up your own color. So I'm going to show you um, real quick what my amber looks like up close. Um, I do have bugs in them. This one has a spider. He is right here. See him? He's really small. This one has a mosquito, and I wish I could have found more mosquitoes. It's been raining so much, but um, I only was able to catch one of those. And my little brother, by the way, did help me do this. He's 13 years old, and I hate to catch bugs, so um, I had him help me. And he doesn't like touching them either, but uh, he did help me catch most of these. This one here is a spider. He's kind of a big spider. Right there. This one's a fly. The fly was so annoying, by the way. He kept floating up to the top, and I kept having to push him down. He was driving me crazy. And even this beetle here, so this is something uh, you might want to avoid, is using large bugs for this because they float. And you have to watch your resin and push them down until it really starts curing to keep them down. This one here is a mealworm beetle. I raise mealworms because I have a bearded dragon. So uh, we raised them for him. And uh, this one here is another spider. This one was a big spider. It's kind of hard to see with this here in the background. Um, this one has, let's see, I do have, I think I had two or three of them that don't have bugs. I don't think that one has bugs. That one doesn't. This one here has a mealworm the morphing stage of the mealworm and the mealworm beetle. Um, my brother helped me collect the bugs, so he insisted that he had to get some form of payment for doing this, and he wanted uh, a cab like that done, so this is actually his. And um, I do have another one that has a tiny, teeny, tiny little spider. Is it this one? Yep. He's right there. He's so small. He's really tiny. But if you don't want to put bugs in it you don't have to put bugs in it but um you know real amber the cool ones do have bugs in them so uh, that's what they look like close up so now I'm going to give you the list of materials that you will need to make faux amber but you don't have to have every single thing that I am using but if you want to have the same results that I have here's what I'm using so I am using really old resin and like I told you guys if you don't have old resin you can color new resin to make it look like amber and probably the best way to go would be just to get that cast and craft uh, pigment that 
is the amber color. And I will look around for you guys, chop around for that. And if I, if I find a good deal on it, I'll put it down there in the description bar below this video so you guys can get some of that. So I'm also using gilding flakes. And this stuff is what is making my amber glow, the gold. It's so pretty. Now, real amber doesn't have gold in it. But I really do feel like without this, my amber would look kind of boring. It's the gold that really makes the amber pop. You're also going to need some black broken glass. I took some black glass beads, some ugly lamp work ones that were chipped and cracked and I went out in the garage with a hammer and I just broke some into fine little pieces and I'm going to put this into my amber and it makes it look really cool. See that's it right there in the top. I love how that looks, a broken glass. And I'm also taking some flat back marbles from the dollar store. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. I've used them before. Um, I've crackled them before in the oven. I just took some ones that I crackled right here. See, I have some crackled ones here. And I took a hammer to them and I broke them into small little pieces. This gives the crackled look, which I didn't use many in here. I can see some right here and here. It's like a crackled look that uh, Amber has. So I have broken glass beads that I hit with a hammer and um, some flat back marbles that I hit with a hammer. And I'm also using Pearl X pigment. This is the uh, super bronze color. If you don't have this, you can use bronze colored eyeshadow and you can also use bronze nail polish, but it's a very tiny amount that you'll need. Very, very tiny. You can actually probably skip this if you can't find something like that. You're also going to need ground black pepper. This gives the appearance of dirt and debris in our resin. I mostly put the, the pepper on the back side. You're also going to need bugs, and this is optional. You don't have to have them. I actually got some fire ants out of my swimming pool, so I'll be using those. And you're going to need a silicone mold. I think I'm going to be using this little Windows resin mold. This is what I've already used. It's a cabochon mold. And when you're making cabochons, you can bead around them, so um, it's really great. But you can use any silicone mold you want. You're also going to need medicine mixing cups. I also got these from Amazon. I think you can also get them at uh, drugstores and maybe even Walmart. You're also going to need popsicle sticks for stirring. You're going to need tweezers for the bugs and also for the glass and little inclusions that you add to your resin. You're going to need paper towels for cleanup. You're also going to need baby wipes for cleanup. If you want, you can also wear gloves. I don't wear gloves though. I used to wear gloves when I did this and they just became a pain in the butt. Um, I realized that if I just wipe my hands when I get resin on them, I don't have to wear gloves. It was, they're just so annoying. And you're also going to need a lighter. This lighter's dying. It's running out of fuel. I might have to use a different one. And uh, this is it. And remember, I always put the materials down there in the description bar for you guys. And like I said, you don't have to have every single one of these things that I'm showing you. But um, if you want to have the same results that I do, you uh, will have to get them. So I have my resin here, and I'm mixing it to according to my instructions. And um, instead of doing doing three cups where I have these two that I pour into another cup and mix it. I just pour my resin into the hardener because um, they say if you're going to have more of the other, you want more of the hardener. But you really do want the same amount of each. So I'm going to have a few drops left in here, of course, because I can't clean every bit out. So I like to pour my resin into my hardener and mix it. And I had some um, mouthwash cups that I've made big, bigger about ugh, bigger batches in where I've done like two tablespoons in each cup, two tablespoons of resin, two tablespoons of my hardener, and then I mix them together. But um, I ran out of those, so um, I'm mixing a, a smaller batch. So just try to get all that you can out.
scrape the sides. Okay, so this is the side, and you can reuse this as long as you don't put the hardener in there. And I like to put mine upside down on a paper towel if you're going to mix another batch after this. So now you want to start stirring this. And um, this is the part where you would need gloves if you are working with two tablespoons. I didn't go to the ta two tablespoon line. What I did, I did uh, milliliters. I went to 12.5 millimeters on each, the resin and the hardener. And it's not up to the top, but it's close. So the secret to not getting any bubbles is how you stir this. If you stir this really vigorously, of course you're going to get bubbles. You want to take your time stirring this, scraping the sides and the bottom. And also you want to go like this. You could tell when you're done stirring it when you don't see the streaks anymore. You'll see the streaks in there. And you want to scrape off your popsicle stick and just keep stirring. Some people get really crazy when they stir this and they have so many bubbles and it's really hard to get rid of so it's just best to try to prevent them by stirring slowly. Just think of uh, scrambled eggs. You don't want to whip it like scrambled eggs. Okay, so I'm going to keep stirring this until I have no streaks left, scraping the bottom and the sides. And when I, I get done, I'll come back to you and show you what to do when we're ready to uh, put some Okay, so now I'm ready to put my Perlex powder pigment in it. If you don't have this, you could na use nail polish and it'll probably just take one drop of nail polish. It takes the smallest amount. We're just trying to get a little bit of shimmer in our resin. And um, last time I had a bigger batch when I made this, so I hope that I don't put too much in there. Okay, so this stuff you think that you need a lot and you don't. It takes such a small amount, so I'm just gonna see what it looks like with that in there. I had double the amount when I made this the first time of, of resin. Okay. Let me just bring it up to me. Okay, it looks good. I can see a slight shimmer. It's very slight, and that's what I want. I don't want it to be really glittery. Okay, so now I'm going to put this to the side. Done with that. And before I put the gold leaf in, um, when I poured it into the mold, and I want to see what it'll do this time if I put it in right now and stir it in. I want to see if it would like roll up in a ball, what, what it would do. Hmm. So it's, it's not balling up like I thought it would. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit more in. Not too much because I'll add more later. But that's nice to know that I can stir some in instead of uh, putting it in later. So when you put this in, when, when it's in the mold and you pour your resin in and you have uh, put this on, it doesn't sink because it's so lightweight. I mean, it's, it's lighter than a feather. So uh, I wanted to know what it would be like if I just stirred it in from the beginning. I think I'm going to do some more. Okay. And you want to pick it up with tweezers because you can't really get it with your hands. Okay. So I don't really have many bubbles. I'm going to get my mold now. And we're going to start pouring this into the mold. I'll be back. So I'm going to put my um, amber resin in here. And the last time I did this, I had static clean from taking the bag off. Because you store this in a bag. And oh my gosh, it made such a mess with my resin. My resin didn't want to pour in. Okay, so I'm going to fill these here. Now you don't want to fill them all the way. I just, I still have this static clean thing. I just did it. Just out slung it. But um, you can clean it up with rubbing alcohol and a lint-free paper towel. What I really like to clean up with is baby wipes. 
that was nice to do. Okay, so I'm going to fill all of these. And again, don't fill them to the top. And if you get too much in one, if it's too high, I fill them like two-thirds of the way full. You can go like this, take it out, wipe it off, and you can um, scoop some resin out. Okay, so I'm going to fill all of my holes and I'll be back. So I just finished pouring my resin and I was going to do those big ones there, but um, other than doing pendants with those giant cabochons, see how big they are? I don't know what else I would do with them. And um, this here is this size. I've not done this size yet. And I'm doing the smaller size over here. And um, because I took the bag off, I have this like static thing going on where the resin was just slinging everywhere. And I'm just going to take a baby wipe and go around and wipe it up. And you can also wipe your hands off with a baby wipe if you have any resin on your hands. I'm going to clean this up, and then I'm going to come back. And right now, just, just let it degas. De it's degassing on us. I don't really have any bubbles, but if you do, while you're cleaning your mold up, you can just degas. Okay? So I'll come back, and we'll put some more stuff in. And you can also use a lighter to get the bubbles popped. Don't do a torch because we're using a silicone mold and you don't want to ruin your mold. So I'm just going to put some more gold leaf in the ones that didn't get much. Just some little pieces. And then I'm going to start putting some of our broken glass in them. Now the bugs float, so that's kind of a problem. So if you put the bugs in first, they're just going to float right back up. And you will have a problem keeping them down. I kind of really like having the gold on just the top mostly. Because when it's, it's like a background and it makes the uh, color of the amber really stand out. Okay. And try not to touch the inside of your mold with your tweezers or a toothpick or anything like that. Even your stir stick because it might scratch it. I scratched some plastic molds doing that and I don't know if a silicone mold would be the same way or not but I don't want to risk it and if you get any um, resin on your tweezers you could just clean off with a baby wipe or the alcohol okay so now I'm going to get some of the glass. I'm going to do these uh, clear first. You don't want to use the gigantic pieces and you don't want to use really the dust. And before I actually used this champagne color. It's not really crystal clear. It's like a champagne color. Use that first. And my other and because this is glass and it's heavy, it's going to sink straight to the bottom of our mold. And if you want, you can wait and let your mold get a little bit harder before you put it in. But uh, I, I like the crackled look on the top, so, so I'm going to continue doing this. I'm not going to put very much in each one, just a little bit. Maybe like three, four pieces in each one. And then I'll come back. So I think I put enough of my clear glass in. And now I'm going to do some of the black glass. 
and this this really does make it look cool I think that the black glass and the gold leaf really just makes it look awesome it's probably like the best part so you don't need a lot as you could see I'm just doing a little bit and this is going to sink and the longer you wait to add it the slower it will sink you can save some you don't have to use all of it and um, when this cures more I don't know maybe after 20 minutes or so put some more on and then you'll have some of the black glass in the background Okay, looks pretty good. I'll do the other ones there in a bit. But now I'm going to go to the bugs. I had a fire ant on my desk the other day. This one here, he croaked. But he's pretty darn cool looking. Look at his little pinchers. He was alive yesterday. I don't know why he died. But um, I'm going to stick him right here. So I like to put the bugs on the side. You may have noticed that I didn't have any bugs in the top center. And that's because they float and the glass sinks. So that's just how it wants to be. I'm just going to move some of the glass away from him. So you could see him clearly. And here's one that's alive. Put him in there. They don't live that long after you put them in. They die pretty fast. Unless these guys are just really tough. Then I'm going to feel bad. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing this. I have to put more black glass in these over here. And I have to put more ants in and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. Okay, so I just put all my bugs in, and I didn't put any bugs in this one, because I realize they're too big for those cabs there, and I think I might, like, put those on earrings or something. I might, like, glue those to some stud earrings. Anyways, my ants did make some bubbles, so if you have bubbles from your bugs, gasping for air, it's really sad. I feel bad. I'm so sorry, little bugs. But you will pres be preserved forever. Okay, so now you can just go back and add some more clear glass if you want. You can add some more black glass if you feel that you need more. I think this one needs more. Um, and also, gold leaf. I'm going to add more gold leaf. I don't have enough. I actually need to go get some more out of my container and add it. And what I like to do is I like to put like a big chunk like this on of the gold leaf. Okay, and then I have resin on my tweezers and then to make it sink to the bottom put a big piece of glass on here which I think I've already used all mine up but you can get a big piece of glass and put it on that and it'll sink down so just go ahead and you know do your thing get get them to how you want them to look and then we're going to uh, move on to the next step So I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper, just a tiny little bit, it looks like dirt, and I do believe that this floats and the black glass sinks, so it's nice to have it on the top here. Okay, and then, after I do this, I'm going to add my gold leaf to the back and then we're going to leave it alone for a few hours and let it cure some. So now I'm just putting some gold leaf on here. I'm not going to push it down. I'm just going to let it 
sit there on the top and rest. And um, I do have to rip these little pieces of leaf up because some of them are pretty big. And we don't need it that big. Okay, so this is really going to make our amber look pretty. Another big piece here. So, I'm going to put gold leaf on these, on all of them. And then I'm going to cover this at a thrift store. Just to cover this and keep the cat hair out and the dog hair and all the dust and everything that's flying around the room. And we don't want to get any gnats or anything like that flying into our mold. So um, I'm just going to let this cure for a couple hours. If it's just slightly tacky, um, that is the point where you can add just a little bit more resin on the back side to top it off and dome it just a little bit and then when we go to make jewelry with this and bead this um, this here is actually because we didn't fill them to the top it's actually st standing up more gosh I can't even explain it but um here on my older old ones or the first ones I did see this line here I left that line there so when we go to bead this the beading is gonna come up to here you know so you're not gonna see that line and it's just raising all of our stuff up gosh I, I can't even explain this but I think you might understand what I'm saying I think I need to get some air I'm breathing too much resin fumes so I think you guys understand what I'm trying to say just let this sit up for a few hours and I'll come back and um, we'll make another batch of resin so it's been about four to five hours and I've just mixed up another batch of resin and I'm going to put some mica powder in here and I think I want to do enough mica powder to make this more of a golden color so I can um, dome the back of my cabochons. So it's best to do a little bit, see how that looks. If you need more you can always add more. Now, one thing I wanted to let, let you guys know about, if you do have a big mold that you're using, for example, if I did it, uh, poured my resin in these or in this big one over here, it would cure a lot faster than the smaller ones. When you're working with resin, the bigger your mold is and the more resin you have in that mold, the faster it's going to cure. Okay, so I'm just going to mix this up. It looks really pretty. Okay, I think that's a nice color. I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my mold. I like to fill it so it is doming. So I'm just going to cover all of these so they're doming. And then we're going to let this cure overnight. Right now I'm filming this at 10.30. So I started, uh, I think it was like around 6 o'clock. I did the first batch. So tomorrow, maybe around 11, 12 o'clock lunchtime, I can take these out of the mold. You could tell if they're ready to come out or not by touching the back of it. If it feels sticky at all or tack tacky, if you like touch it with your fingernail, if your fingernail leaves a little indentation, it's not ready to come out. So um, I wait till it's completely hardened because you don't want to ruin it. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going, fill in the backs, and um, I'll see you guys tomorrow when I take them out. So I'm back now and it's the next day and I've actually waited a little bit longer because I was busy doing some things so it's past uh, noon, it's 1.24 right now and um, I found this container, I've had 
these for a while now. I have three of them. And it is perfect for my mold. It's a project case. It's the Irish project case. It's the real thin ones. There's a, another one that's like double the um, height. Anyways, the thin one is perfect for my mold to fit in it and to keep it clean. So I can put this in here when I'm using it and when I'm not using it, it's going to stay free of cat hair and dog hair. So they are ready to come out now. They're hard enough where I can pop them out, but they're not totally cured. They still will take some time to totally cure, but uh, we can now pop them out. Here's what they look like from the back. I love the clear resin molds because you can look at them from behind and see what your project is going to look like before you cure it. Pretty cool. Now I did put some more, um, what's it called? The gilding flakes, the gold leaf. I think I have more gilding flakes in these than I do my first batch. Here's the little one. I was going to put the um, the flat back earring finding things on these, but I changed my mind because I, I would like to make rings with them. They're so tiny. Okay, so I'm going to demold all of them and I'll show you what they all look like when I get them out. So I took all of my cabochons out of the mold and they look really good. I'm very happy with them. I do have more gold leaf in my second batch than I did in my first batch. And I think that they both look equally beautiful. I really feel like you can't mess this um, resin up with the amber. It looks great either way. So I wanted to show you guys. Remember the clear broken glass I put in? I hope my camera is showing it. Can you see the crackled look right here on the top of the cab? I see it in this one here, just the crackled look that makes it look even more like real amber. I love that. It's so pretty. Okay, so I wanted to show you, I had one of these here that had a little piece of um, resin sticking off. See how sometimes you have a little bit of resin like that sticking off? You can cut it off, that one there just actually pulled off, but I really feel that it's best to come in with a nail file. This is a glass nail file, you don't have to use a glass one. But every time after I do a resin pour and I take them out, I like to go around and just smooth the edges and get off that little rough edge. I do this to all of them. And I do let these cure longer because they're not fully cured. It does take a couple days for them to completely harden. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you liked it because it's my first resin video and I actually have several more resin things that I would like to show you guys so let me know what you think please like this video leave me a comment and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and click that bell because YouTube is always changing if you and if you just subscribe you're probably not getting videos from me you also have to click the bell to get notifications when I upload a new video like me on Facebook don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos and follow me on Pinterest Thanks for watching!